this farm fully automatically generates dirt. The blocks can be further processed into dirt, mud, clay or into bricks. The player selects the wanted block type on this panel. The produced blocks, including the byproduct of the farm, oak logs, get blown up in two TNT blast chambers. Items are conveniently stored in shulker boxes. This farm is loosely based on a farm by Emango, but highly optimized for maximum output. Most blocks are generated by spreading moss to nearby stone blocks. Saplings have a chance to spawn. When they are grown into trees, the moss block is converted into rooted dirt. Now we are taking a look on the actual farm. It starts with the bone meal farm by a mango. The bone meal is spread to the four main modules. A new cycle starts by pushing new stone blocks in. They get turned into moss blocks. Since only a 3x3 area of stone blocks around a spreader moss block is guaranteed to be converted into moss, three spreader blocks are used. When a spreader block is bone mealed, a sapling might generate on a neighboring spreader, preventing it from spreading moss. That's why each spreader moss is cleared by a piston before being bone mealed, and why they aren't being bone mealed simultaneously. Unfortunately, not only saplings generate on top of the moss, but also moss carpet and small grass. Especially the grass is problematic, since it consumes loads and loads of bone meal when the dispensers fire that are supposed to grow saplings into trees. That's why a trick discovered by Two Not To Name is used. Stairs next to the sapling spots get waterlogged for a brief moment. Due to the hitboxes, saplings prevent water from spreading, while carpets and grass are flushed away. This cycle of bone milling and flushing is repeated four times. Then, the generated saplings are grown, producing logs and rooted dirt. The lowest logs are pushed up to create space for the next saplings. The incoming stone for the next cycle pushes the dirt and overflowing items out. Items get composted, the bone meal is reused. Logs are collected separately. Each module might produce up to 18 dirt and log blocks in one single cycle. The timing between the modules is designed around this extreme case to prevent clogging and breaking the collecting block streams. The required precise timings are done by this main clock. The signals it gives out are distributed to the modules by using this ray line, because ray lines are very lag efficient. Signals get drawn out of the line by using downwards facing observers. The main clock is toggled by this main switch. The redstone lamp indicates that the farm is running. When it's turned off, the redstone lamp blinks while the farm shuts down. Only when it's completely shut off, indicated by the deactivated redstone lamp, the player is allowed to unload the farm or turn it back on again. If you ignore this rule, the farm might break. The most direct path to the blast chambers is used in dirt mode. Both logs and dirt simply get blown up and stored. When a player hosts the rooted dirt, it gets converted into normal dirt blocks. Those are stored in the chests and are thrown to the player. This is the only thing a player might do, all other modes work playerless. Switches controlled by the mode selector panel divert the dirt block stream into processing modules. To create mud, the dispenser shoots water bottles into the dirt. The empty bottles are refilled automatically. Hoppers can transfer items every 6 game ticks, 
which is too slow to provide water bottles for a 4 game tick block stream. That's why the block stream is split into two 8 game tick streams, converted into mud and merged again. This mud converter is entity free. In clay mode, the mud is dried in a clay converter, also a design by Ilmango. The blocks are split up into multiple parallel block streams to slow them down. They are pushed above dripstone, which randomly converts them into clay. The size I chose converts about 99% of blocks. The block streams are remerged and fed into the blast chamber. Note that clay blocks drop into 4 clay balls, so about 20,400 clay balls per hour are produced. To save space, only 18,000 of the clay balls are stored. The rest is left to despawn. In brick mode, most of the clay balls are smelted in a furnace array. Dirt and mud would clog the furnaces. Hoppers buffer the items after each explosion. Then they are fed into two sorters and afterwards sent to the furnace array. 18,000 clay balls per hour are smelted into bricks. The overflowing clay balls are stored directly. For fuel, oak clocks are used. A buffer chest is filled with charcoal by eight smart furnaces. When the buffer is filled up, the smart furnaces are shut down until the buffer is empty again. The farm needs to be provided with empty shulker boxes by the player. From the main control panel you climb up these two ladders and there is the crafting bench where you craft the shulker boxes. By pressing Ctrl, Shift and Q you can throw out the shulker boxes and they are stored. You can check the fill level of the storage manually by checking these chests. When no empty shulker boxes are left or when the storage is full, this lamp lights up and the farm automatically shuts off. To start the farm, you first select the farming mode. As long as the farm is running, you can't change the farming mode. These four redstone lamps indicate which part of the farm is currently active. Now the last module of the farm, so the fourth one, is producing. As long as at least one of these redstone lamps is activated, parts of the farm are still running. This means you cannot leave the area, nor change the farming mode. When the farm is turned off, it takes a little bit of time until it's completely shut off. As you can see, new blocks are still being produced. Now, one after each other, these indicator lamps will turn off. The main one is the most left one, indicating that the farm is still producing new blocks. Now it isn't anymore. The rest of the part systems are now shut down. Only when these lamps stop blinking, you can turn the farm back on again, unload the area, or change the farming mode. Enderman picking up dirt can break the farm. On my survival server, I've built it up in the sky and lit everything up, but you can also use a mob switch. In the first and most important step, you build everything up 
and test each block stream by placing some blocks manually. Then you run the bone meal farm until each producing module is completely filled up. This can take a while. Now I control if every module is working. The first module was activated and now I start the whole farm. For the testing I use dirt mode. I turn the farm on and immediately off again, so only one cycle is running. Then I check if the module is working correctly. This looks great. Back in the main control panel, I wait until the farm is turned off again. Then I deactivate the last module I tested and activate the next module. For testing, only one module at a time should be running. I activate the farm for a brief moment again. This is repeated for every module. When all modules work fine, you activate all of them at once. This is done while the farm is completely shut off again. Now you can run the farm at full speed. At first it should be run in dirt mode to check if the TNT blast chambers are working correctly. The last step is to check every farming mode. It's a very complicated farm and it shouldn't be the first farm you build. You should have a little bit of redstone experience and if you run into any problems please let me know in the comments below. As I'm a non-native English speaker and this is by far the most ambitious video I've made so far, please let me know how you found it and what I can improve in the future. Thank you.